Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. In today's video I'm going to show you a really easy, effective and adaptable plant feed recipe to help boost your plant health and also help benefit your soil's health as well. So this season has presented quite a lot of challenges to me as a gardener. Firstly, a massive lack of rainfall, which is why I'm going double time with mulching with grass clippings and touch wood we haven't had any soil problems at all as a result but also there's many other things for example compost prices have been skyrocketing and it's getting more challenging to try and justify whether growing food can still be affordable and worth it. I strongly believe that you can grow food in a way that saves money and actually by having these certain challenges it makes us focus on the things that really do matter and what really matters is the health of our plants at the end of the day, the health of the soil and us enjoying being out in our gardens and providing food for our household. And so the recipe that I'm going to show you for the liquid amendment in this video only requires one expense and it's a container to do it in. The three other ingredients cost you nothing at all. The first ingredient you need is water, specifically any kind of soft water. My go-to is rainwater. So the issue with hard water and things like mains water is that they put chlorine in it to disinfect the water. Well, we don't actually want the water to be disinfected because part of this liquid amendment relies on us using local microbes to help ferment it and turn it into a really useful resource for us gardeners. The second ingredient is actually a handful of leaf moulds. You can find this under any big deciduous tree where the leaves are breaking down. Now, if you're in the middle of a city and this is hard to come by, the second best option is actually a handful of really well broken down homemade compost. This is the inoculant. This is the biology that helps with the amendment. And the third ingredient is actually plant matter. And this is where it gets interesting. When you combine these three ingredients together, you're actually just creating a recipe for Jadam liquid fertilizer. This is something that I've mentioned a few times before on the channel, and this is the dedicated video for it. And the reason why I feel that the plant matters where it actually gets interesting is because you actually create crop specific liquid feeds. With Jadam organic farming, which comes from Korea, one of the big teachings is that a crop is its own fertilizer or a crop is its own feed and fertility and that by creating either a liquid feed or something similar using the crop residues you've got the optimum mineral content and balance to feed future generations of the same crop so rather than creating something different you're actually creating something that is dedicated to helping that particular crop because you're feeding it with that crop. Let me explain how we can kind of work this out with nature. Let me use an apple tree to help explain this more clearly. So in autumn, if we left this apple tree, all of the crop residues will just fall to the ground. That includes the leaves and also any of the old fruit, etc. And it breaks down and it provides the minerals and nutrients for the tree to use. So the tree is feeding itself with its own crop residues. And with Chadam, you take the exact same principle. You're using the crop residues, which are very, the, the nutrient balances are specific to match the needs of this tree. We take the same application and same idea with Jadam liquid fertilizers by creating crop specific feeds to help provide the right balance of minerals to help the future generations of those crops and improve their harvests. Using this idea, if we wanted to create an optimum liquid amendment for fava beans or broad beans, we'd make one out of broad beans. If you wanted to make a liquid amendment for peas, we'd then make one using pea plants and pods and shells and all sorts. The thing that I quite like about your damn liquid fertilizers is actually you use the whole entire crop. You don't just use, say, the leaves, say if you're doing one for carrots, you'd also use the roots. 
The trick is you want to create a really high quality feed. So you do use the actual parts of the crop that you'll eat, but you don't need that many because it's a supplement. And as it breaks down, a little goes a long way and you'll be using it at dilution ratios of like one to 400 after a year of it breaking down. So don't worry about sacrificing because what you are doing is investing in the future. One caveat I have with Jadam is that it's designed for field or commercial scale agriculture. And if we've got a small garden, we're not going to have the space to create all the different containers for these different amendments. Now I haven't tested this out, but I think it makes sense is to actually create kind of family or group specific amendments. So rather than making one just for kale, why not make a Brassica Jadam liquid fertilizer. Now you might be thinking, Hugh, you haven't shown me how to make one. So let's cover that next. The first thing that you need to do is decide what crop you're gonna use. This one, we'll use an example, it's Swede. So we're clearing out some of the Swede. So we've put in actual Swede roots that we've actually mashed up a bit to help with the breakdown. And then also all of the leaves and even some of the Swede flowers. You pack a container up full and then you fill it with soft water to just above the level of the plant matter. And then the final thing that you do is you sprinkle a handful of leaf mold or well broken down homemade compost over the top and just put a lid loosely on top of that. You don't need to mix in the leaf mold at all as long as you sprinkle it over the top and that's absolutely fine and loosely put on the lid and that's all it is to actually creating and starting a JLF. As your JLF starts to break down you can begin using it within two weeks so you usually will dilute this around 1 to 30 with soft water or rainwater as you're watering your plants. Now as it ages you want to increase the ratio of dilution. I've actually got a list in the video description to save you remembering so you can easily reference all of that but you'll get to the stage where in about a year's time you'll be diluting it around 1 to 400, 1 to 500 so you get into the stage of like maybe a couple of teaspoons into a watering can. So the idea with JLF is you just use it as a supplement so whenever you're watering something you can and add a little bit in and it's just going to help with the general health and quality of your crops. We're not trying to get really big massive crops, we're trying to get healthy nutritious dense crops and that's one of the lovely things that JLF can offer. Even though I've been talking about making the crop specific liquid feeds, there is nothing stopping you using the exact same recipe to make more traditional ones. For example, making one with comfrey to help your tomatoes, or you can do one with grass. I've done that in a previous video to do a nice general multi-purpose feed for seedlings. So basically whatever crops or resources or weeds or plants that you have that you can turn into something that's gonna help you grow better food, just go for it. Now you might be thinking how do you maintain a liquid feed when you start to extract the actual liquid. This is one made out of grass. Well what you want to do is never take any of the solids. The solids are eventually going to break down. The only thing you want to take is the actual liquid like this. So instead over time as it starts to break down you then retop it up with more soft water, rain water and more of the exact same crop. A quick aside is one thing that I've noticed with these different amendments is that many of them are going very different ways in terms of the microbes. So on top some of them have this amazing kind of cheesy mould and other times it's kind of all kind of green and gunky and it, and it is really funky, it smells funny but it's all just part of the process and it's really important to know that if something does smell a little bit bad it doesn't mean that you can't put it on top. Not everything has to be aerobic. So one of the things that excite me most about JLFs is that there's something that are always there. So if you feel that a certain crop is maybe not meeting the expectations that you have in terms of growth or health, you've always got the JLF to fall back on to help give it a nice boost. What you can do is to make it into a bit of a habit, this is a grass JLF, of using a JLF whenever you're transplanting a crop. So 
One of the most important things when you are transplanting is to provide enough water to that seedling. But adding a little JLF as well can help introduce some of the minerals that they might need to help them settle down. And then if you just go into a regular routine of maybe using it once or twice a month whenever you're watering a crop, just add a bit of JLF just to give that extra little boost. Really, it's down to you however much or however little you want to use it. I actually think if there's one thing to take away from this video is to actually start making your JLFs this year. You don't have to use them this year, just make them. It's a form of nutrient banking. You've got this store or this source of nutrients that you can use. So start a next growing season, you're starting on the front foot with all of the dedicated feeds that you need for your garden and for some lovely growing success. Something that I think Jadam liquid fertilizers are especially suited to is actually for using in situations where you have beds with poor quality soil or if you're struggling with a lack of compost. And this video right here, which we released last week, shows you seven tricks to overcome the challenge of either a lack of compost or growing in no compost at all, yet still producing food.